Hi, Eileen. I have this problem that you're asking about, and I know that you are primarily interested in how to find the rejection region using StatCrunch. And, and to do that, we need to review just a little bit. We've got this problem, and we're told that the engineer has recorded the braking distances for two types of tires. Now, that tells me off the top that this is a two-sample test. And we're also told that each N, each sample has 35 tires. Because N is greater than 30, and we also know that these are randomly selected and the samples are independent, those two things tell me that we can use the Z test to solve this as opposed to the T test. We're given um, the type A, the mean of the sample, X bar 1, and type B, the mean of the sample, X bar 2, and we're also given the sample standard deviations, S1 and S2. Normally, when you, you use the um, standard normal solution to find Z, you have to have the population standard deviation. But again, because we've got more than an N of 30, we can use the sample standard deviations. Okay, the key to this, to, to finding the rejection region, first of all, recognizing alpha. In this case, it's 0.1. And the question is, what, what are the null and the alternative? So let's look at those. The null in these difference of mean cases, and when we're comparing means, we always subtract the two, and we set the null to be that there is no difference. The mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. The alternative is the complement. Mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to zero. And because the inequality is in the alternative, the alternative is the claim. In other words, the claim is the engineer says that the two types of tires have different means. Because the alternative contains the inequality, this is a two-tailed test. That means we have to put alpha over 2 on each end of the standard normal curve to find the rejection area. So let's look at StatCrunch. Okay, I've opened up StatCrunch and to find the rejection region we just go to Stat, Calculators, Normal and we get our little sketch of our standard normal situation and we don't have to change the mean and the standard deviation. What we have to do is put in the alpha or in this case because it's a two-tailed test we put in half of alpha, which would be 0.05, and I'm going to first calculate the left tail, compute, and we see that's minus 16.45 rounding off. Now we know by symmetry the upper tail, the right tail, would be just the, the positive version of that, minus 1.645, but we can uh, just check I'm going to put in 0.05 again and click Compute and there we see the upper rejection region um, again 1.645 anything a Z greater than 1.645 would mean the test is significant and reject the null or again if we go less than we see our left rejection region so a Z that's either in the negative the the lower rejection region a z that is smaller than minus 1.645 or a z that is greater than plus 1.645 okay just for fun let's go ahead and run the hypothesis test this time we go to z stat two samples with summary and we bring up our dialog box there I think our first mean was 43, and again, I, I'm just putting numbers in, I think are approximate, 4.8 for the standard deviation, 35 for the size, the second was 45, standard deviation 4.4, and the size was 35. We've got the hypothesis test already selected, the difference mu1 minus mu2 is 0, and the alternative is not equal to 0. We click Compute and we get our results here 
um, we get our standardized Z statistic of minus 1.87. That is on the lower side and minus 1.87 is smaller than minus 1.645 so it definitely falls in the lower rejection region. But we also get a p-value of 0 0.06, 0 0.07 rounded. That is smaller than the alpha of 0 0.10. So that also tells us to re reject the null and therefore the claim would be supported, I think. Mm -hmm.